This past week, the world of television lost Hugh Downs, a guy with a warm presence in front of the screen and a never-ending passion for the medium. He was 99 years old. We dedicate this episode to the memory of Hugh Downs. And welcome back to the Game Show Show. I'm the Frost Father Aaron Sanders, and today we're going to dig into the Jack Berry and Dan and Wright collection. We have three game shows that we're going to review as their board game adaptations, so hope you enjoy. Let's start things off with game show number one. Now picture this. You remember the childhood game, the memory game, where you try to pick as much matches as you can in order to win? Add that with prizes, because it is a TV game show, and a Rebus puzzle in order for you to win the prizes, and you have Concentration. Started in 1958 on the NBC television network. It was created by Jack Berry, Dan and Wright, and a couple of others. But unfortunately, the quiz show scandals reared its ugly head, and that means the rights of Concentration were forfeited over to NBC, who still has the rights to this day. Now, the board game adaptations, my goodness. It was a cash cow for Milton Bradley. It was able to spawn 25 editions over at that company, and much more with others. And you're going to see that in just a moment. But I'll tell you this. Interestingly enough, concentration lasted for 15 years, from 1958 to 1973, and had great hosts such as Hugh Downs, Bob Clayton, and Ed McMahon. But The Price is Right was able to take that accomplishment in 1987 for the longest-running game show. But nonetheless, the legacy of concentration lives on to this day, and especially in board game adaptations. So let's dig in and concentrate on all the board games I have for one of the longest-running game shows in American history, Concentration. It's the game of puzzles and prizes. It's the 17th edition of Concentration from Milton Bradley back in 1972. Let's have a look at the contents for this game. You got the cash, area for the prizes, and way to go above and beyond. Somebody took it in their own hands to make their own prizes or make spare prizes in case they weren't there in the board game. Then you have the prize stands for both players. And the piece de resistance, the concentration game board. Game is simple. You just gotta match the prizes up when you pick them. And when you do, you win the prize, we put it up on the board, and you get to see two parts of the Rebus puzzle, which could be a person, place, or a thing. Let's take a look at this Rebus, see if you're able to figure it out. So you have I feel so silly. Solution, I feel so silly. Now, this is the Roller Mag Changer, a big game changer for concentration board games. But as time goes on, you see, it's a little bit difficult to roll it up to reveal a new puzzle. You see, I had to use two hands to take care of the top and the bottom. It's just difficult. And you have to take in consideration that the paper may rip if you don't take care of it. But nonetheless, it's still a good addition for anybody. Zoom in to almost 30 years later. It's the 40th anniversary edition made by Endless Games in the late 90s. Content's pretty much the same from back in the Milton Bradley days with some interesting additions. Instead of the Rollomatic, you have the puzzles on their own separate sheets, and the game board, instead of having 30 squares, now have 25 for faster gameplay. And let's see if you can solve this one. Stop e or complaining. Solution. Stop your complaining. There's nothing to complain about this version of Concentration. Well done, Endless Games. And credit to Steve Ryan who made those Rebus puzzles for the 40th anniversary edition for Endless Games. He was able to modernize those Rebus puzzles to how we know them today. Good job, Steve. Next up, two more game shows, and I'm going to do them in just one big fitting. The Joker's Wild and Break the Bank. The Joker's Wild and Break the Bank were both hosted by Jack Berry in the time. The Joker's Wild started in 1972, got canceled in 1975 by CBS, but found great popularity when it entered the nighttime syndication world in the late 70s to the mid 80s. It was able to spawn three hosts, Barry of course, Jim Peck, and Bill Cullen who hosted the last two years of The Joker's Wild. And it had a couple of board games, no question about it. It's popular to this day, a cult game show, whatever you like it, and plus it even spawned a revival version in this millennium, and it was hosted by Snoop Dogg. 
fancy that. So now you got a rap and game show connection. You know what? I'll just go on and just get to the chase. I got a couple of board games I'm going to show you of those two shows. And Break the Bank. It was a short-lived game show. Thanks, Fred Silverman, who worked at ABC at the time. From 1976 to 1977, Break the Bank was on our TV screens, but it left too soon. But on top of that, they were able to spawn a board game version, so you know it was based off a good TV game show. Tom Kennedy hosted it, and then for the syndicated nighttime version, it belonged to Jack Berry, and he was at the helm for that. It features celebrities, it was a little bit like Hollywood Squares, but you're going to hear about the twist of why it wasn't like Hollywood Squares. So let's start things off with a look at the board game of the Joker's Wild. The game where knowledge is king and lady love is queen. Check it out. I went on a journey on eBay and found this, the Joker's Wild first edition board game from MB back in 73. And a nice treasure, the original price tag from WH Smith. Here are some of the contents, the question and answer booklet, and you flip it over, I have the category booklet for those Q&As. But I'm a little bit disappointed because they only have three questions for each of these categories. The rules of the Joker's Wild is you spin the category wheels, in this case flip the categories cards, and answer questions from them. I hit a triple because the Joker's a wild, so I'm going to use it on the category of colleges and universities. So I just got to answer the question first of 500 wins. And then you go to the bonus round. It's not like the beat the devil round that the show's famous for. It's flip the cards, see if you can hit the Jokers and win the prize. Let's see what I'm going for. We're going to be playing for pie. As long as I don't see the devil, we win. Here we go. Joker. 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 Let's go. From the Jokers, we go to Break the Bank. This was a board game made by MB back in 77, and for a short time, they were able to get a board game. You want to know how it's a TV show? Because it says right there, based on the TV show. You know, the beauty about these Milton Bradley board games is that they were kind enough to put the rules under the front box. Here's a quick version of the rules of Break the Bank. The contestants must win positions on the game board, must guess the correct answer, not the bluff, to each of the MC's questions. Now let's take a look at the contents. Inside the box, the main game board, I'll get to that momentarily. You have the plastic legs where the board's supposed to sit on. Did not make the trip. You have the booklet containing the instructions and the Q&As, almost 500 questions and answers. You have the game board pieces, or the layouts. And the seller was kind enough to put most of it in the bag. Thank you kindly. The rules to break the bank, pretty interesting to say the least. Contestants will take turns picking boxes and they will flip over to see if it has a dollar amount or any sort of symbol. And whatever box they pick is going to be connected to two celebrities no matter what. Say for example, if I choose box number 14, they'll be connected to this celebrity and that celebrity and they have to answer a question. Now it's up for the contestants to pick the celebrity that has the right answer. And if they do, they claim that box. There are three $100 boxes, three $300 boxes, and three $500 boxes. Notice that they're touching when it comes to that. It could be either in a straight line or just a weird shaped Tetris piece. I don't know. The blank boxes, however, are very crucial because if you pick the box that has a blank behind it, you lose your turn. The money boxes. However, the money bags, there are five of them. They're scattered everywhere. They don't have to touch like the blank boxes. But the interesting thing about it is, if you pick a box that has a money bag behind it, you have the option either to claim the money bag or flip it over to pick another box. The object of the game is to get three money bags or three in a row to win the game. And interestingly enough, there's one wild card behind one of the boxes on the game board and you could use it to any combination you like. Remember, if you're able to get three of the same dollar amount in a row, you win the game. However, if you're able to flip over three money bags, you break the bank, which in this board game is worth $7,000. Alright? Good. And that's a wrap for the Game Show Show. Thank you all for watching and hope to see you come along for the ride in future episodes. In the meantime, you can follow past and present episodes of The Game Show Show by going to YouTube under the channel S23-1995, and you can also check it out on Facebook. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at A. Sanders Windsor. Always look to the pleasure of your company, as always. Episode 4 will be coming out very soon. But until then, on The Game Show Show, 
This be the Frost Father, Aaron Sanders, saying so long for now.